Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you heard, my name is Charlene, and I take care of the family department at Inspire. As an NGO, we believe that uh, an individual who has autism um, is not a standalone um, entity, but forms part of different systems. Um, one of them being the family system, the schools in which they go to our organization. So obviously we decided to um, uh, include this in our uh, day here. So when Anne asked me to, to contribute to this seminar, I said, okay, what am I going to do? What, what do I want to share with all of you today? Um, and I decided to uh, ask questions. You're not going to be um, asked to answer me now, but I want to trigger some reflection to take home with you. Maybe the first time you're having some alone time, uh, you have a couple of questions in your repertoire to, to reflect. So my first one is, how would you describe the relationship you have with yourself? Do you find it a conflictual relationship? <laughs> Me definitely. Um, do you feel compassionate towards yourself? Do you find humor in the relationship with your own being? And having a relationship is very important, obviously, with other people, but we sometimes underestimate how much it's important to have a relationship with our own selves. And this reminded me of a study which was done way back in 2014. And let me explain how this study goes. So basically, they, there was this group of men and women, um, and they wanted to uh, see how much human beings tolerate being on their own without no devices whatsoever, which we have a lot nowadays, that distracts us. Um, and basically, this is the process of how it went. So they had to enter a room for 15 minutes with no devices whatsoever. And before they entered the room, they had to press a button which led to an electric shock. It wasn't a dangerous one, but it was still painful. Then they entered the room, they left the switch there. They told them, listen, you don't have to press it, but we're just leaving it there. So, on their own, for 15 minutes, some people <laughs> actually prefer having an electric shock rather than staying on their own with their imagination, planning stuff, reflecting on past experiences. You know, our human brain is capable of so much things and yet we prefer an electric shock. And some of the people pressed it more than once. If you're gonna ask me why, I don't have the answer to that, but it still triggered some more questions for me, and I'm gonna ask them to you. So, what is the potential of our own self-awareness if we're so much distracted with all these devices? How open are we to reflect on ourselves, on what we do? And is it possible to actually do it with all that is going on in our lives? I'm going to shift a bit. We'll go back, back to that. But I'm going to shift on. Now, when I say parenting, I'm talking about caregiving in general. So as in, in this profession, in the educational profession, and special education profession, obviously we are caregivers. Um, and according to the American Psychological Association, parenting, well, there's much more, but these are the three major goals, is ensuring children's health and safety, preparing children for life as a productive adult, transmitting cultural values, and then they end with this really important statement. A high quality parent and child relationship is critical for health development. And, you know, that's got me thinking. So if I, for example, mm, want to model, shape, guide someone to become a productive adult, 
what does being a productive adult mean to me? Is it someone who earns a, earns a living, raises a family? If we're linking it to autism, with the wide spectrum of autism, what, how does it equate there? If I don't have a definition for myself, my organization, this family, this school, how are we shaping it for our children? And then um, it got me think of thinking about my values, the meanings I give to my life experiences. And it reminded me of a story. Uh, my eldest nephew, a couple of years ago, he asked me, said, Auntie Shar, how does your work make you happy? And I wasn't expecting that question. I, I had a framework. I know I, I'm happy doing what I do, but I had to find the language, obviously also how to transmit this to a 10-year-old boy. Like he was saying, with your profession, you're, you, know, you work with people going through struggles, challenging life experiences. How does that equate to happy? It was a bit strange for him. Um, so uh, obviously I had to get all my thoughts, all my experiences and try to um, find an answer because he wanted to have more of a relationship with his aunt and that was his way of asking it. So uh, if, I, if I wasn't aware of what makes me happy in some way, I needed some time to elaborate it for him. but. We need to have these words. We need to have this language quite ready with us. And then again, when we think about our values, our beliefs, the meanings we make of our life experiences, um, how much of those are mine? We got them from someone where they transmitted to us and possibly we didn't even question. We took them on board and started practicing them without questioning if they are they resonate with us or not. Maybe, maybe we wanted to tweak them or change them or push them aside altogether and you know, have different meanings, different values. And obviously then as caregivers, what are we, are we providing a distinction of what is mine and then what is yours? Like, you know, if I have this particular value, which is important for me, obviously it's important for me because it's meaningful in, in respect to, our, to my life experience, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the same for this child I'm working with or for my son or daughter, or for my nephew. So it's not just giving them value, but it's more about giving them the process on how they're gonna build their values, how they're gonna find it, how they're gonna make meaning from their life experiences, not actually my life experience. And then so, how am I, my behavior, the way, of my, the way of being that I chose for myself, how much is it resonating with my values? How much I'm living these values which are so much important to me and how am I projecting, projecting this um, for those around me? So again, another question. Have you ever tried having a conversation about yourself <laughs> with yourself? Um, are you self-aware? Now let's define self-awareness. So the ability to take an honest look at yourself without attachment to it being right or wrong. So let's see a bit more how it looks like. So as human beings, we have judgment. It's a fact and it's natural. That's how we decide what's good or bad for us. But before that, what about just observing ourselves, observing how we behave in different situations with different people? It would be good if we can do it while we are actually acting, behaving, but we can also do it afterwards as well in hindsight. And then yes, you know, we reflect, we critique, we say, okay, this is what happened. I know I can do this in a different way or I can behave better next time or it can be more helpful next time but first it's observing understanding why what brought us here today and then also being okay with our own shortcomings we're human beings we make mistakes and that's okay being more compassionate towards ourselves 
But still, although we're compassionate, although it's okay, we still remain hopeful, and we'll see it in the next slide, to affect change. Change that, you know, will bring more um, committed, solid relationships that can tolerate all the different emotions that we have. To be kind to ourselves, as we said, we make mistakes, and the way we behave, what's important to us, what hurts us, what makes us angry, it didn't come out of nothing. It, ca it came out of the different life experiences, obviously, we went through. So they're valid. And the more we validate them, then the more we're going to be compassionate to ourselves. And obviously, then also to apologize and say sorry. When we apologize, sometimes it's much more healing for relationships rather than always trying to get it right. But when we slip, you know, we can take responsibility for it and obviously say sorry. And then do hope. That's my motto. Um, and, you know, be resilient because as we make mistakes, others are going to fall short as well to our own expectations. And when we are compassionate with ourselves, we're going to be more compassionate with others as well. And, you know, we keep persevering in life. Life experiences keep on coming along. And, you know, we remain hopeful and keep building our own relationships and remain self-aware. Short and sweet, short and bored. Thank you very much. <laughs>